Today, we're going to be talking about scapular winging, what it is, what it means for you, what to do about it, and of course, how long you have left to live. Now, I'm just screwing with you. It's not going to kill you. What is up, guys? It's Richard from Pain Free Better Me. And if you're new to this channel, I talk all about musculoskeletal pain, what you can do to get rid of it so you can get on with your life. All right, so into today's topic, wing scapulas. So you must be wondering what the heck is a wing or finger scapula? Well, it's a rare condition that can occur from two main things, either nerve damage or muscular imbalances. It can present with pain in your upper back, your shoulder, your neck, things like that. It can also present with shoulder drooping. I mean, maybe not that dramatically, but something along the lines of that. Weakness is also a symptom, especially if there is nerve damage that causes your muscles not to be able to work properly. And of course, the inability to lift your arm above shoulder height, making normal chores such as combing your hair, grabbing things above you, very difficult. So before I can show you what scapular winging is and what makes it such a big deal, first we're gonna have to dig into what a normal scapula looks like. The scapula is a major player in the movement of our upper body. In order to do anything with our shoulders, moving up and down, left and right, around and twirling, we need our scapula to be in complete sync with all our upper extremity joints. So if anything upsets this balance, it makes it extraordinarily difficult to perform anything remotely involving our shoulder. A good example would be... So how do you get a web ding sca- ah, oh, I said web ding. <laughs> so how do you get a wing scapula in the first place? Well, there's a number of reasons that could explain how it could happen. Anything that damages the nerves of the surrounding musculature of the scapula is going to have an effect on scapular winging. All right, let me give you some examples. Acute trauma. So if someone tried to hit my shoulder with a bat, or if I got into a car accident, it'd be very possible that I could have some scapular winging as well. Microtrauma or repetitive overuse. Typically, there are two types of people that, well, basically everyone then, that experience this. Either office desk workers who are pounding away at their desk all day, sitting down, not really moving, or manual labor workers who are working all day long on their feet, doing things over and over again that really puts a strain on their body. There's also things like post-infection. So after getting sick, it's possible that the virus could target your nerves, doing them some damage there. Post-injection as well, if someone screws up the needle placement and then it could cause scapular winging. There's also post-surgery. So if they botch up the surgery or if it's just a side effect. Recurrent dislocations of the shoulder. Ah! The shoulder and the scapula are very, very, very interconnected. So damage to the shoulder could mean damage to the scapula. And also volleyball. Of all the sports, volleyball. I mean, he got hit in the head too, so it's not like that would really cause any damage to the scapula. But volleyball is a common sport for scapular wings since your arms always have to be overhead and you'll be spiking a lot and going through this motion. Whee! Last but not least, we have the most quirky and the most rare explanation for scapular winging. Sleeping. So sleeping can cause scapular winging because if you sleep in a weird, awkward position and you happen to compress a nerve, once you get up, you're going to feel pretty weird at first. And as you try to move around and get up, stretch, you'll notice that your scapula might not be working in the way that it's supposed to. And this is namely because of compression. Nerve compression can lead to damage which means scapular winging. So now that we know how scapular winging can occur, it'd be worthwhile knowing what exactly happens inside the body if you have a winged scapula. So if anything goes wrong in the muscles that control the scapula, then we are probably going to have symptoms of scapular winging. If one of the muscles doesn't do their job properly, the other muscles are going to have to compensate and end up pulling a lot harder. So the first muscle that we're gonna be talking about is the serratus anterior. It's the most popularized and most well, arguably most important muscle when it comes to scapular wing. When we move our shoulder blades up and down, we need something to keep it in check so that it doesn't fly off of our body. And the serratus anterior, and of course, the other connective tissue will help do that. So this muscle, also known as a boxer or superhero's muscle, because it's always prominent on those guys, are part of a group of muscles that helps with something called a suction mechanism. 
And that suction mechanism keeps that scapula in place, locked onto our body like it's supposed to be, and not flying out and about. So if the suction mechanism <laughs> stops working for whatever reason, and usually due to palsy of the long thoracic nerve, which is the nerve that innervates the serratus anterior, you are going to have scapular winging. All right, so the next muscle is the trapezius. A very popular muscle, you see the, the yokiest guys at the gym have giant upper traps. Here, the lower trapezius fibers are gonna be arguably the more important fibers when controlling the scapula. Because of this, the scapula will drop down, lean outwards, and get pulled off to the side. And similar to the serratus anterior, if you have issues with this muscle, you're gonna have issues lifting your arm above 90 degrees. All right, the rhomboids. These guys are in between your scapulae, right down the middle, and there are two sets of muscles. There's a rhomboid major, and there's a rhomboid minor. So what these guys do is that they help squeeze your shoulder blades together. So you get that nice retraction of your shoulder blades. So if the rhomboids, as I like to call them. So if the rhomboids get injured in a way that affects the nerve running through it, namely the dorsal scapular nerve, you're gonna have a bit of symptoms of scapular winging. So if this happens, you're probably gonna feel some pain on the inner side of your shoulder blade. So this will also make the bottom portion of your scapula protrude a bit outwards as well. So if I was given the twisted opportunity to choose exactly what scapular winging I could get, I would choose rhomboid paralysis. And the reason mainly being that the functional loss from rhomboid paralysis isn't as bad compared to trapezius and serratus anterior paralysis. All right, so now that we covered the basics of scapular wing, let's get into what treatment we can do. Lucky for you and I, conservative therapy or exercise therapy has been very successful in treating cases like scapular winging. With that being said, exercise therapy seems to be one of the best ways to treat this condition. Now remember that each case of scapular winging is going to be unique from every other one. With that being said, don't think of these exercises as the only ones you can do or the ones that you should be doing. These movements just capitalize on all the muscles that could be potentially involved in a case of scapular winging. Without further delay, here are the exercises. Grab a resistance band or a rope tie or nylons or suspenders. Anything will do the trick. Wrap your hands around the resistance band a few times until your hands are about shoulder width apart. Keep your elbows tucked in at your sides and maintain a neutral grip so that your thumbs are pointing up. Now pull the band apart as far as you can. Once you reach that point, hold it for a second or so, then slowly return to your initial position. This exercise is meant to strengthen our external rotators and coordinate our rhomboids and mid-traps together, which is great for recovery from injuries to the scapula or the humeral musculature, or even both. Do this several times and then rest. Then do this exercise to your heart's content, but safely, or else it won't be safe. Grab a resistance band or a substitute. Make sure the band is at about shoulder level, basically where you deliver a punch. Go through a punching motion slowly and in a controlled manner. At the end of the motion, push out a bit more using your shoulder blade. This extra movement should come from your scapula almost exclusively. If you're training your right arm, for instance, lead with your right foot. Grab the band tightly in your hand and don't let go, or you'll injure your pretty face. Oh no. Rinse and repeat this process, then switch over to the other arm so that balance is achieved. Here you can see my scapula moving, especially at the end beyond the normal punches range. Wrap a resistance band or any substitute in your hands a few times. Similar to a band pull apart, you're going to pull apart the band horizontally at shoulder width as far as you can. Then bring one hand down to your hip and with the other, pull it up diagonally from there. Then do the same with the other side. And that's one repetition. Start the process over and have fun cheerleading. You may notice at some points my hand at the bottom for diagonal pulls are at different positions. Mix it up and see how it feels for yourself. This exercise helps with building up coordination and strengthen the upper posterior chain, including your middle traps, rhomboids, and even your serratus anterior. You'll need dumbbells or something of the sort to prop yourself a bit higher than whatever surface you choose to do this exercise on. I chose the table because I like tables, and tables are like me. 
Lift your butt off so it's not touching the table. Hold this for about 20 seconds or as long as you can. Then take a break. This exercise is meant to focus on lower trapezius activation, something that most of us need work on. You can tell my butt is lifted off the table, but my legs are still on, which is what you want to really load your lower traps. Make sure your wrists are as neutral as possible, as without flexibility training, this can do a number on your wrist joint. If you have any questions or if you found this video helpful or if you found a complete trash, please let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, please consider dropping a like, subscribing so that YouTube can start paying me so I can pay for better lighting. And uh, Just kidding. YouTube doesn't pay me squat. Get it? Squat? Uh -huh. I'm sorry. Okay, goodbye.